Welcome back to the Overdrive Radio Show. This is Ginger, and I am so honored today to have Tracy Melchior on our show. Tracy, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm so excited. We, I think I was sick, and then you were sick. We kept putting, you know, putting off the interview, so I'm so glad we're finally getting it. <laughs> uh, the timing is always how it's supposed to be, so we'll just trust that it's the right time. Awesome. Well, I mean... It's so funny because when I friended you on Facebook a while ago, I knew I knew who you were, and then I, I really didn't know why, but your face is really something that you can't really forget. You don't, you're not, you don't have an everyday face, and you literally look like you did when I saw you the first time. I mean, you have an age. It's not fair. Um, but my, uh, I, my granny, who has passed now, like her favorite thing to do after... Uh, 12 o'clock news she stayed on one channel she stayed on cbs and stayed there throughout the afternoon so she yeah. she watched the young and the restless she watched bold and the beautiful she watched uh one life to live she watched everything that came on that channel so she knew you on uh, young and the restless and then especially the bold and the beautiful and wow. and literally when i saw that you were Kristen Forrester. I was like, that's it. That's who she was. Okay. <laughs> uh, so Aww. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. And my granny would be honored to know I was talking to you. Oh, <laughs> well, that's cool. I, yeah. So fans are so loyal. They really are some of the best fans out there for sure. Do you guys have like, kind of like Comic Con? Do you have like soap conventions? You know, what? unfortunately the soap world has really fizzled out so much in, America. You know, when I first started, I think there were nine or ten soap operas on, and they had soap opera digest awards. And, I mean, there were all, you know, aside from just the daytime Emmys, there were other soap awards, and right. um, it really has fizzled out, unfortunately. I wish they did more stuff like that. It would be fun. Um, I know because the fans are so loyal, but they mostly just do, like, individual fan events, like Bold and Beautiful will do a yeah. their fan event. General Hospital will do one. Or, uh, they, they more have it separate like that. And, you know, I think it's been replaced by reality TV, you know, because that's where the real soap operas are happening right now. <laughs> I don't yeah, know if it's real, real but... Life, so. Yeah, <laughs> I guess that that becomes more entertaining, even if that's more that's probably more scripted than you being on the bold and beautiful. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a shame. You know, a lot of um, you know, the soap I actually two soaps I've been on have been canceled. Not Sunset Beach and One Life to Live. Um, and I think we got replaced by a talk show. Oh yeah, too. So that's the other thing that's you know getting replaced is opinion shows and stuff like that. Well, you're it's right. Because, you know, the, it, it's really, you know, I haven't been on a soap for a while now. Um, and, you know, there's less jobs with half as many soaps as there used to be. But um, I do miss it. And it was a very great gig to, to work on soap operas. You were, you were doing it for quite a long time because The Bold and the Beautiful, I know you had a really long run with that one. I did. It was off and on during that time. Like during, I, I started on that show. My son had just been born and he is going to be 19 in January. So wow. it definitely was a long time ago, but I left for a little bit and did um, One Life to Live during that time because they had taken me off of contract and I was available and I auditioned for One Life to Live and went and did that for a while and then came back and then I had another pregnancy and I was off for a while. And then, unfortunately, I guess I was out of sight, out of mind, and there yeah. was not um, any storyline for me, unfortunately, which is a bummer because that was really a nice, a nice job. And I know a lot of the fans really wish some of the, um, you know, original family members would would be on more often. I hear so. Well, and so you know, you have a lot of acting experience, so you've definitely known like what the producers and directors go through, and. Um, so now you're um, writing, producing, and directing, correct? Um, the new uh, monochrome documentary. Yeah, I, you know, I got into acting because I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to have a voice. I felt like it gave me a platform, and I enjoy acting and I loved it. But I realized I wasn't really being fulfilled on the things that I was passionate about as much as I had hoped. Um, 
And so when, you know, this opportunity came up with just being so motivated by all of the divide in law enforcement and all the angst in the country that I was sensing, I just felt very called to do something about it and decided why not use my background. And I've always talked about doing more social impact type productions. Um, I, just to kind of go back a little bit, when I was on The Bold and the Beautiful, we had an AIDS storyline. This was the early 2000s. You know, AIDS has you know, made such remarkable progress since then right. with, um, with medication. But back then, it was, you know, still more of a death sentence. Yeah. More of a death sentence. And it was this huge storyline. And we, it was really, I loved that I was a part of something that more was about spreading awareness about something that mattered. And I guess that's sort of what the beginning of me wanting to do more social impact type productions started. So this is something really close to my heart. Um, I am married to a police officer and have been for 20 years, which, um, you know, they say between our two careers, we don't have good track records in law enforcement and Hollywood for long marriages. So I'm pretty proud of that. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and then, you know, my father is a retired police officer, and wow. with lately I feel like there's been a lot of bad communication between community and law enforcement. Right. There is a lot of upset people, and cops are upset, and I just felt like I have this ability, and I hope I can follow through on this. But I've always had a knack for being able to be some sort of a peacemaker when people are at odds, and I'm hoping to be able to to use that in this film. Well, and you know, um, I was, just because of of the name, I was looking up, I mean, I know what monochrome means, but I was looking up the actual definition, and I like because it says, a photograph or picture developed or executed in black and white or in varying tones of one color, of only one color, and it, and it says the adjective is consisting of or displaying images in black and white or in varying tones. Like it basically the black and, or the monochrome photography is, you know, even, you know, it's more like black and white photography is, is uh, the variance of gray, you know, but by definition, all black and white photos are monochrome photos, not the other way around. <laughs> like it's, it's really cool when you look at, you know, because monochrome is basically from from black to all the different varying colors all the way to white. And I think that was a, a really insightful name for, well, for the you. documentary. Was, when I first really wanted to do it, it started with the title. Um, I just became obsessed with, you know, what would I do it on? How would I, what would I call it? And, you know, I just started brainstorming. I became obsessed and it's so cool that you had that same inclination to look into that stuff. Um, and I did the same thing and I went a step further and I challenge you to do the same because it's really fascinating. I looked up meaning, the symbol, the sim- symbolic meaning to black and white. And it's fascinating. There's so many things, you know, it goes from like, danger to like honor and courage and then you know with white it can be surrender or pureness and right there's just so many meanings that are fascinating between the two colors and um i i just find it interesting to dig kind of deeper into those meanings um but one of the other things too is um with monochrome you think like obviously when you hear monochrome the first thing you think of is photographs yeah, And that's another thing that I really thought was at the center of this is His photography. Images. Yeah. So, for instance, when I am talking about um, monochrome, and one of the things I will do in this documentary is I will talk about how when you're photographing something, if you zoom in too tight, if you recall, there was a, um, um, what was it, National Geographic magazine when I was young, they used to have a photograph on the back and they would zoom in really tight on images of, you know, like a a zebra's coat, you know, and you would have to try and like guess. Figure out what it is. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. And that occurred to me when I was 
you know, deciding what I'm trying to do with this film is sometimes if you're really close to something, it's hard to tell what it is. And the same's true if you're really far from something. So the whole concept of this film is to try and find that perfect focal point for the people that are, some people are so close to it, some people are so far from law enforcement, you know, people who've never done it for a living, telling cops how they should do it. Yeah. And then you've got cops that are so embedded in it that maybe there's some, you know, perspective that the community can show them to help them do their job better. So it's just bringing that into that perfect focal point. And I'm actually a documentary, like, addict. I love I love watching documentaries. I'll, I'll be on documentaries and I'm, I'll tell my mom, you know, I saw this on Netflix and she's like, that's a very weird thing to watch. And I'm like, but it isn't. Like, I'm kind of an amateur anthropologist. Like, I love studying <laughs> people and how, how do people get to these points in their life, where whether they go to a criminal aspect or or someone like Gandhi or whatever it is. Just, I'm I'm curious like that and I am too I, I am too and I love that and I feel guilty because my career has been acting for so long that I have kind of abandoned scripted television myself where I do primarily watch I love true crime I love yeah. documentaries I feel like I'm not just watching for entertainment I'm Being learning informed. things yeah um and I love that. I, I love that there's so many on almost every topic anymore. But, you know, with that said, there are a ton of other documentaries already on law enforcement. And so it's like, oh, you know, it's been done. But I'm doing such a different approach because so many documentaries on law enforcement are basically cops in uniform being interviewed and talking about, you know, the facts and the figures and you know, why it's hard and, you know, those kind of things. And I'm taking such a different approach. Um, and it's not going to be your typical documentary. Well, and I was looking at, you know, the information you sent me about the medium of, or the platform of, you know, TV and movies and, and putting this documentary together. Um, you know, I was seeing it said, you know, the average you know, like what people are doing with their average time they have available. And, you know, when it says the average TV watching is two hours and 40 minutes, 47 minutes a day, I'm like, that's probably off for most people. They probably do it more than that. But, but like total leisure time, it's like five hours a day that people spend in, in their in leisure. And it is that movies and TV are such an incredible medium to reach people that you wouldn't have able to be reached otherwise. Yeah. I mean, especially now, I mean, I, I think what you're saying is true. And I think some of that leisure time is still spent. Those two overlap in that graph that I sent you yeah. where a lot of leisure time now is also with some sort of, you know, with Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime, all, all the streaming just on our phones. But everywhere we go, we're, we're being um, influenced or educated or, you know, consumed with media. Um, and I felt like, you know, there's a lot of people that keep saying something has to be done regarding the divide with law enforcement and community. Something has to be done. Something has to be done. And yet, I'm sitting here screaming, going, I know what we can do. Because right now they have, you know, and departments are trying. They're really trying to find a way to bridge the divide. Um, but it's not working. Because what they'll do is they'll have, like, these community meetings and such. And the community will be able to walk up to a microphone. And they'll get to yell at them for about an hour, take their turn, you know. And the cops just stand there stoically and, you know, thank you for your input. But it's really not being productive. It's not producing any results. Their minds are being changed. They're not really listening or hearing each other. So um, I decided to try this new approach. And I, I like that you were saying um, you want to answer the or have people have an answer to police work is. <laughs> mm hmm because I, I think it's, I think we, we need to be informed and all of us figure out what our answer is and, and help understand each other. Cause that's the yeah. problem. It's, 
Exactly. And see, the thing is, when most people, um, you know, think police work is to serve and protect. And then they don't understand when they see them getting into physical confrontations, sometimes that turn fatal, with people. And they're like, well, how is that serving that guy? How is that protecting him? And that's the difference, is they're serving and protecting from some of these individuals. And sometimes that's where it gets ugly and sad. Um, And I think that that's what people maybe don't understand, is the cop is not, oh, I'm going to go just, you know, rough up somebody. They have, and hopefully, of course, if they're wrong and they're out of line and all of that, I 100% am not defending bad behavior in police officers. But you can't automatically, when you see them, have to engage with a suspect or a criminal. Assume that how can they do that? They're supposed to serve and protect him. You need to realize that perhaps they're serving and protecting us from him. And I have my one of my best friends that I've had since I was three. She, her husband, just retired from uh, the farmers branch in Dallas. The um, whole police for police force after twenty eight years. And what I interviewed him with another guy who wrote a book called Behind the Badge. And it was kind of a cop's perspective to help people learn what it's like to be a cop and how hard it is to work, work out your faith when you're a cop. And, mm-hmm. and one of the things he said is he said, it's so hard because if you don't come in with a strong presence, the people who are committing crimes won't feel it. And they have to be tough or have to give off that, you know, um, s- strong presence so that the people who are committing crimes and um, things like that, you know, they, they feel that presence, but he said, it's so hard to just, you know, take off your uniform and go, okay, now let me play with my kids. You know, it's, it is, I'm sure your husband can verify that, you know, that it, it's in the hard on the families, the wife, the kids, you know, cause it is sometimes so hard to, to just take that, that job. And it's not like you're an accountant all day, and you just go, okay, well, I'm not going to do numbers tonight. I mean, it is very hard to just take that off, you know, and, and convert into family life that night because it is it is such you where you have to be a certain way. This particular uh, friend of mine, he worked in the gang unit. He was, he was, um, he spoke Spanish. He was Mexican. So, you know, they um, used him a lot in the gangs because he uh-huh. could speak both languages and the stuff that he went through until he retired, his wife didn't know half of it because he did not want to scare her. And so we don't, uh, people don't see both sides. And for him, it was like, you know, he said it was his kids gave him perspective. Like it was hard for him to remember what it was like to not be a cop. <laughs> He'd been one for so long. And, um, but, you know, kudos to you because it's hard to be married to them too, you know, because it's, you know, they don't know how to sometimes transition and it is a, it's a thing, especially when you are a Christian, like trying to, um, continue your faith and, and, and abide that, but you've got your work is, you know, really hard. And then you're also trying to do the family thing. It is, it's quite consuming. I'm guessing your husband and you both can attest to that. Yeah. And you know what? I appreciate that there's, you know, people that are your friends doing and trying to let people understand what it's like. Cause I do think it's important to put ourselves in other people's shoes, but at the same time, I'm my approach with my documentary will be so different because that was a choice that we made. You know, these officers, they made that choice. And that's an argument a lot of people, you know, they discard stuff because they're like, well, they decided that was their choice. They, you know, no one made them be a cop. And so it's true. My husband made a conscious decision to choose that profession. And he was a police officer when I met him. So I made a conscious decision to take that life. So I don't want I don't think I need any sympathy for that. You know, I'm, I'm not asking anybody to just sympathize with us. Um, because it was a choice. And, you know, my husband was very responsible and respectful in the fact that when I met him, he was, um, 
he let me know that, you know, he'd been a police officer for about seven years at that point. And he said, you know, I never wanted to get into too serious of a relationship or consider getting married until I was an officer for a certain amount of time because I knew the job could change me. And so I wanted to know who I was and I wanted whoever I married to know this is what you're getting and not be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> of how I might change because it does. It, it, it hardens them. And yeah, it does take a certain personality to be married to somebody who does that career. Um, you know, little things like when my kids are little. My husband worked at LAPD and there, he was on the SWAT team. And, you know, it's like if there's a major crisis in Los Angeles, he's getting called to work. Like So most right. people, their husband's going to leave work and come home and help a family in an earthquake even, you know. No, that's when they're going to have um, mandatory, mandatory deployment, you know, and everybody's called in to help. And so you're on your own. And so it takes a certain amount of strength and um you know, it, it definitely is something people need to really consider when they're going into that profession. Be be thoughtful of it. So, is this documentary from what I from what I'm reading? Like, it's kind of like you presenting the both perspectives and letting people decide for themselves what does police work mean. Like, mm-hmm. because it's not even though you're um, married to someone in the police force, it's not a pro police force documentary it's informative of of the perspective that is lost between both sides because it's and especially you, your husband being in LA that that's had a bad reputation for a while and you know mm-hmm. i'm sure they still have to deal with that um uh, but it's it just um i think that's something that most documentaries if it's about police it seems to be you know basically pro-police or, or anti-police. It's a, a film about yeah. how, a, how a policeman has abused it or, you know, how how police are trying to make the world better. But, um, exactly. in, the, but in the middle, you I'm get lost. To, yeah. Exactly. And that's what I'm trying to get away from. And that's where I feel this is, I mean, I don't know if this is too big of a word, but it almost feels revolutionary um, and more productive. And that's why I'm hoping I can get the financial support to get it completed because that is a challenge. But yeah, I, I don't, this isn't a two hour commercial on why you should like cops. Right. Um, and it's not a two hour commercial on why you should hate cops. Um, I feel like we have this tribalism going on in our country right now where it's us against them in so many things. And, you know, it's supposed to be the United States of America and we are so, divided there's nothing we're not united on anymore um and yeah i mean everybody of course is going to have their opinion and i'm not naive enough to think that i you know it's going to be this kumbaya moment with um you know people that are very um divided on this issue but i am hoping that some people that are kind of like somewhat you know, in the middle here can sort of at least, you know, reach across a little bit and be like, okay, well, maybe next time I encounter a police officer, um, it'll be an interaction with mutual respect. Yeah. And that's the goal is just mutual respect. So you have a opportunity for people to get involved with uh, donating to your documentary through Kickstarter? Yeah, I have two different platforms I'm using. Um, one is Kickstarter, if you want incentives. Um, some people really enjoy the incentives. So I have things like, um, like I mentioned, my husband was LAPD SWAT. So there's an opportunity where he could go and, you know, you could be with the SWAT team for a day and go through what they do with their training and what have you. Wow. I have um, an opportunity to go ride with LAPD mounted units. So if you like riding horses, you can go on a trail ride with the LAPD mounted unit. And I plan to attend that as I well. I would, I would assume you would go. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, and then, you know, there's other things too, where, like I said, we want all the sides. This is all about like coming together. So there's another opportunity where if you have a very strong opinion on this issue, and I'm not saying just pro-police opinion. I don't care if your opinion is anti-police. 
you have an opportunity to, if you donate um, a certain amount on the Kickstarter, one of the incentives is that you will be in the movie. As long as there's not too many swear words. <laughs> my only thing. I'm not big on a bunch of swear words. But if you want to have your opinion, you know, if you have an idea of what you think the solution is, um, and you want your voice heard in a movie, you can go on the Kickstarter campaign and look through the incentives and find which one where we will make sure that your opinion is translated in there. Um, but if you're more someone who isn't interested in the, the incentives of, you know, like the downloadable version or coming to a screening or having your, you know, a credit as a producer, or you know, if those aren't of interest to you, but you do um, get killed on your taxes like I do and need a tax break and it's the time of year where we're like, I need a write-off, I'm either going to give it to something I believe in or I'm going to give it to the government and you want um, a tax deductible write-off, I have a fiscal sponsor so we can also um, offer tax deductions on a different platform that I have as well. And those are all, um, if you go to my Facebook page, Tracy Melchior, or um, Twitter, I think they're all in my bio. Um, do you have a website for your your documentary? You know what? I, I don't, but I do have a Facebook page, Monochrome Documentary. Okay. So they can find out more information and see all the links for the Kickstarter and mm -hmm. anything that they want for donating. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm really excited about this. Like I said, I'm already a, a documentary fan, but um, also you and, you and I share the horse thing. Um, I, 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 we breed horses at our, um, our horse farm. We breed quarter horses. And I was like, Oh, she has a horse. I, that, I love her more now. <laughs> and my yeah, granny loves you. Huge, huge for me. I grew up on a horse farm in Colorado. Um, and horses have been my spirit animal for, for many years and, um, always a, a big part of, of my life. And that's why the, the LAPD mounted thing is like super cool. Thank you, Tracy, so much for being on the show. And again, you can go to Facebook and look for monochrome documentary and like the page and follow it as well as get involved with the campaigns to, you know, donate towards the documentary. It's so important, especially like, right. Like we were talking about right now, it's so divided, whether it's race, political parties, or, you know, whether it's police or, um, it seems like everything ha is almost, it's just one side or the other. There is no, there is no in between. And, and we have to have that perspective of each other and not be just, you're on your side of the fence. I'm, I'm on this, on this other side and be willing to reach our hand across the fence and try to understand, even if you don't agree to get to a point where you respect their point of view and you're trying to understand it. And that that's a big job if that's all that happens is that people are trying to understand the other side. I agree. Thank you so much for letting me get the word out to try and do exactly that. And, you know, my, my hope is to do tackle more issues like this, you know, and find the middle ground on a lot of things to try and, you know, just bring more people together and in mutual respect. That's all I, I'm going for. And there's so many other things you can hit on. So I, you'll probably be in the process of making the documentary when you see another issue and, or more than one, you know, when you start doing them, usually you start kind of things pop out more than they did before where you, you start, if you're a writer, then you start thinking of several other subjects you, you can write on. So probably during this process, you'll find uh, a dozen more topics you can do documentaries on. So yeah. I'm excited. You're a horse lover. You are my granny's. Uh, one of your favorite actresses and and I love I love the documentary so I'm just a big fan of yours uh, and I'm 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 so excited that you know, you're doing this and I hope people get involved and and you know donate towards this and and just help people find find a middle ground on an issue that's um, been so divisive so thank you for all your time Tracy I know you're busy and I'm just excited to be able to talk to you and get this interview oh thank you so much have a wonderful day